1988 at the University of Padua, Italy with a 34-year personal practice in multimodal biopartical implant dentistry and intraoral welding. One of the authors of the implant dentistry recommendations of the Italian Ministry of Health 2014 and 2017. is the president of the new Italian implant study group since 2009 being the master and confident editorial board of the American Academy of Implant Prosthodontics. He is also the professor of the Master of Oral Implantology of the UN University of Peace, Rome 2023. Hearty welcome to you on stage for the presentation, sir. Okay, good evening. Thank you for a nice presentation. Thank you for invitation. And uh, many congratulations for this uh, astonishing organization that I think it deserves an additional applause. Thank you to Dr. Varendra Kumar, who is a leader who is bringing to the highest level this subject and all the staff which support him. We all want to simplify being aware of uh, the numerous problems and features of oral apparatus. So I will uh, talk about some of them and then summarize some problems. The first of them is bone quality. There was a person who understood before the others that you could not entrust the spongy bone. And this person was Dino Garbaccio, who drawn and built a screw implant conceived to reach the cortical bone this deep inside, the deep cortical bone, with a long shaft smooth shaft, and you can see here at bottom uh, right, an histology performed 1990 after 10 years for in, from immediate loading. Case performed 98 by a colleague of Garbage. You can see the abutment had been bent, and you can see which is the outcome of this histology. But the majority of the colleagues in many countries of the world are convinced that submerged implants are at this level and the one piece of implants are at a lower level and that the people, the colleagues who use the, the one piece implants, they do it to save money. I would tell you why I am not, I don't agree with it. Let's pretend that we have been inserting four implants in the premaxilla of a patient, immediately post-extractive. At the left, internal hexagon submerged implant, then inter external hexagon submerged implant, then two one-piece implants, shape chosen by choice. Then we insert the abutments in the two submerged implants and we mill the other two implants. And we apply immediately the temporary prosthesis. There is a guy from Italy who has been demonstrating that if you have a perfect connection and you apply immediate temporary prosthesis, the bone survives between the implants. 
But the fact is that to build the definitive grounds, you must remove the provisional ab abutments. And when you do that to perform the definitive prosthesis, the bone backs down till the connection. This is regular outcome. So, you will have a difference, a gap of distance between the one-piece implants and the submerged implants. More distance from the level of bone where there are the submerged implants. Dennis Tarno, in uh, 30 years ago, 1992, has been publishing an article in which he has been bringing his experience on 288 teeth, in which he says that if you have a distance between, between the contact point between the crowns and the level of the bone of seven millimeters, you have 73% 73 a black spot between the teeth. And after 10 years, he has been talking about the implants, saying that the distance over the bone is average 3.4 millimeters. The height of the gums. And we see it in any article, scientific article. For example, these are big guys, Bush, of course, Passage 10. You can see this crown. Where is the level of the ball? It has been backing down in the connection, and there is a black spot between the teeth. <clears throat> Another article from South American colleagues. They say the only significant association reported was a positive correlation between the papilla size and the distance from the bone crest to the contact point. The manipulation of the restorative components can influence the stability of the surrounding tissues. This is from Piatelli, the Piatelli group. It is, he is one of the colleagues who has been a professor at the University of Chieti, Italy, who has been publishing the most in the world. And it talks about its 2023 static bacterial leakage in different conometric connections and in vitro statics. In all these connections, there is a leakage. Minor, major, but there is always a leakage. And bacteria cannot stand, uh, sorry, bone cannot stand contact with bacteria. This is the American Academy of Implant Prostodontics monograph. Some Paul Benchard has been publishing this article I'm inside the editorial board, as you can see, together also with Mike Schulman, which is the vice president of the academy and the president of Shadow Wheeler. He shows in the lateral incisors, sorry, go back, two nice submerged implants with temporary abatments, immediate crowns. The bone is there, but if you see, after performing definite crowns, the bone is no more there. It has been reabsorbing till the connection. These are from Libal. Healing abatment, when they perform the definitive prosthesis, the bone has been backing down till the connection. So, we must think with our minds, because many people, many colleagues, see those images, they say, oh, how beautiful it is. I don't see this beauty, this is my opinion, because there is a circular outcome, there is no bone interproximal, there is no bone on the palatal side, the bone is not circular in the anterior maxilla. These are from China, and they talk about distance between the gingival margin and the bone, three to four millimeters, three to three point five millimeters. Saying this, from the bone implant to implant contact to the gingival margin, three to four millimeters. I'm sorry, I've been pushing the wrong button. 
So we must think if this is a success or not. But the title of the Congress of the main association of the OSI integrated implants of Italy, which is in, in Italy the pathology is well recognized. In October, they've been having a Congress whose title was the Nightmare of Perry Implant Papier. You can understand. They use just to merge the implants. So I don't want to have a nightmare. In view of that, for example, let's talk about this implant. This is the first implant used, spread it a lot in the scientific world. It is the Tremonte book 1964, in which it talks about a lot of cases performed, 150 to 200 cases performed. And Tremonte has been the one who has been bringing titanium to medicine not to implantology, to medicine, before it was not used. And this is the Tramonte screw. Tramonte is not there, it will be added <laughs> this. I've been inserting one of these screws in this patient, canine zone, 2004, immediate temporary prosthesis. You can see at the center, after nine years, there is not less talk. And if you see on the right, you can see how the bone peaks are still there. And we have a very good ground root relationship. And if somebody does not believe of the importance of the ground root relationship, we must think about the leverage that would come from here to here if there was an abutment inserted in a screw, like the one that uh, they are used uh, submerged platform switching screws. This is platform switching the right way. The name was not there, but the concept was there, also with other implants. Garbaggio screw, I show you just because I saw the patient some days ago. You can see there is no papilla loss. Another case, screw thrown by me many years ago, inserted in the palatal side of a uh, superior premolar, immediate loading, and you can see which is the response of the bone, and which is the response of the bone also here, which is interesting. But the fact is that there is no connection which disturbs the bone. That's the concept. So we must think if these are series A or series B implants. <clears throat> I've been deeping in this concept since a lot of years. This is a, my publication 2007, in which I've been deeping in this because somebody now is talking about that. Maybe I've been reading some of something. But you can see I've been doing also an implant with the papilla. Hmm? to protect the bone. And the data that I've been harvesting, I've been harvesting from statistical study of 25 years since 1989 till 2014, I've been performing about over 7,000 implants. Having a look to a lot, a lot of different implants I've been using in my uh, professional practice, Massacre study because recalling the patients after five years, eight years, ten years, slides everywhere in my house, the, my wife waiting me, and uh, luckily it's finished. But anyway, it's been published with Carpide on the internet. <clears throat> so to simplify now, if we have white bone, we can insert white implants. If we have thin bone, we can insert thinner implants. For example, white bone, one piece or submerged screws, thinner bone, one piece screws, thinner, thinner bone, we can use the blades. You can see how thin ridges you can uh, deal with. And all these implants reaching the deep cortical, as we saw at the beginning, with the blades 
you reach in the posterior mandible, the cortical, the deep cortical on the middle line. And if there is not this possibility and the bone is thin and the bone is the 3 d four, we can use also the thin cylinder implants. <coughs> so we have many weapons, a lot of choice of implants, and there is a means that can join them together simply so as to build an implant structure composed by the implants and the water bar. Any implants, titanium implants that you choose. And this apparatus has been invented by Dr. Pierluigi Mondani in 1968. We are the first prototype in the Museum of Medicine of Venice. And this being a dear friend of ours. <clears throat> so we build a structure with bicortical implants, well the part that we actually saw in many lectures these days, we can load immediate, immediately without words. I show now uh, uh, a case in which I've been inserting uh, eight screws and three blades, you can see that some of these screws are post traction a couple of screws are uh, flapless, but we must respect the soft tissues so as to add keratinized gingiva around the implants. What I want you to show, that is not the idea, doesn't matter, is that you can pull the implants toward the back. The welding, it's not necessary that it is passive. If we pull the implants toward the bar and toward the strongest, uh, strongest cortex, it is very good during surgery, not after post-integration of the implants. During surgery, you do that and you, it's better to do that because it is osteoinductive. We have a lot of experience in this. Well, the machine in office of my father came in 1980, and I used since 88, 35 years. And you can see how much you bend the implant, you pull the implant toward the bar. Now this is the finished case, and the patient that you can go and eat with there. This is two hours work, immediate provisioning, immediate loading, anything. <clears throat> there is a protocol about immediate loading published in 2005 by Franco Rossi, the one, the case we saw before, Marco Pasqualini, is here with us, Mangini Mani. A lot of implants, the welding, and what you do today is well grounded. And safe. And with a, such a structure, we provide the correct opposition to mandible elevation. I've been glad to listen from some lecturers that finally we are talking about that because there is an anterior muscular chain, there is the hyoid bone, the muscles, suprahyoid muscles are tied to the mandible, are tied to the cranium, and this is very important for us for muscular tonus, for TNJ, and also for power. And also for aesthetics, like this guy said in a movie that many of you have been seeing many years ago, American Zigolo, Richard here. <coughs> but many times, the bone is scarce. And when we have scarce bone, and we want to provide such a structure, we have a very bad ground root ratio, and we can we must insert the implants where the bone is. So we must be aware of the situation we face. One is the frostbite. Many patients that we deal with in our professional practice are in frostbite. And when the patients are in frostbite, we must insert the implants where the bone is. So the implants will be in crossbite and the prosthesis will be in crossbite. This is mandatory. Okay. 
We must not make prosthesis like this. I've been harvesting data for a long time. 86% of the patients coming to my office over 40 years, they work, they have at least one couple of teeth in gross pipe. And these light, lights, sorry, this is very good, parafunctions. This is very important to remember. We must think not to add parafunctions to our works. <clears throat> so, for example, a case like this in which the bone is really scarce because you can see here there is just a pterygoid process and a little part of the pyramidal process of the palatal bone. The sinus is involved by the teeth, inflammation, there are the, an implant who are, who are being failed. Here, I don't see the light. Here, you can see how thin is the ridge. And so, you can anchor the implant just on the corticals and use the welding machine. But it is very important in cases like this, if you want that they stay, that you rule correctly occlusion, static and dynamic occlusion, lateral and protrusion. Mandatory. And another thing is the antagonist. We've been listening a colleague talking about that, Dr. Indy, being like in his presentation. <clears throat> the patient comes because he wants this area, of course, removable, uh, re removable, remove, remove the teeth, and first, we must say the test of the patient, recovering the phone still line and the so line, possibly, that we must work on the antagonist. And it's better to do it first, also because of the cost, because they, he must be aware, or she must be aware, that there are additional costs and additional therapies to have. The costs that are important. We must not be shy to talk about the costs, because we live professional practice. So first, we go and deal with these teeth, and then we go with the implants. And you can see a situation like this. It's not so easy to deal with. You can choose also this type of implants. By cortical on the deep cortex, that we weld together with a bar that must be at center reach. Things are to be performed well. This is the bridge, and this is after some years. You can see they draw the deep, the deep anatomy of the bone. <clears throat> Another case, you don't, cannot see where the canal is, and you resolve with a very stable structure with this implants. You can see this is one single section, section and you go to it with the patient, if you want. Two, three hours of work. Thanks to my cortical, welding, and uh, being aware of how to manage the occlusion. Situations in which, for example, the bone here there is not, on the other side there is, but you must give a balance to the patient, so first you insert those implants, and this is after 18 years. You can see you cannot recognize. They work very well. Few people use, but I suggest to insert in your activity. So the ball has a lot of variations, and we must deal with this. For example, let's talk about chi. Chi, when it is high, it is often very thin. And you to start to look find situation like this. This is an article published for colleagues of the University of Padua. They wanted to talk about the piezo with whom they have been removing the implants, but at the end they conclude you have not to insert implants in the chin by cortical when the chin is a conclusion. But I don't understand why when I use three millimeters wide implants, situation is completely different. So, we must think, maybe it was surgical technique the problem, 
possible because they use very high speed drills and wide screws with other things, rigidity threads. We must think that mandible flexes under muscular activity. And this is well documented by numerous articles coming from the 1966, you can see upper right, till today there are also Indian articles. It's a little flexion. But there is a modulus of elasticity to respect. And so this can be one of the hypotheses of hypothetic causes of the problem. So when we deal with this area, it's very important to use a gentle technique and a proper input. And you can have a situation like this. You can see three implants immediately loaded in the inferior chin, being served in 1999, and inferior right, you see, after 20 years. No bones. Another thing is that the submerged implants in this area are too wide. They have the connection, and we're talking about that. And they have the cause. And this is important, because where the coils are uncovered and they become dirt, it is very difficult to fix the situation. <clears throat> this is a case of mine. I don't want to show just cases of the colleague. This is a failure of mine, partial failure. To be inserted into this patient, this was the case at the beginning, in 2000 and 2000, 2001, different things. This is multimodality, lots of different things. But if you look at the chin, I've been inserting wide implants provided by cores. One piece and two metals. And you can see after 20 years how much has been the bone loss around these implants. Situation not so easy to fix. <clears throat> so at the end, an implant like this can be suggested. Long shaft, smooth, so and capable to indulge to mandible flexion. I show you another case in, in which I've been inserting eight screws in the for interforaminal area and a couple of blades in the posterior, and you can see well that together immediately loaded, that you don't lose the bone. And this is one of our protocols, four to eight implants in the interforaminal area, I could say four to six to eight was an exception. A couple of implants in posterior that can be these plates that I like very much, or other implants if the bone is wide. <clears throat> and you build a unique implant and bar structure. It is what one piece structure, which is very important. You can find in our book these things, last book we have been published. <clears throat> so let's talk two minutes about this kind of plates. I've been, uh, the, the Ramos plates have been invented by uh, the Roberts brothers. I've been uh, uh, modifying the technique of insertion with an insertion from anterior to posterior, so as to insert the posterior part of the implant under untouched tissues. And you can see here insertion with the hammer and then a, a mechanical hammer. There was noise out a little bit. You can see how the implant goes backwards under untouched tissue. tissues. Hard and soft tissues. And this was the case. You can see after 10 years, there no bone loss. This one of the crowns. You can perform also short bridges. And this is stable. 
these are stable inputs. You can see also performing the link of holes, landing link on the of the blades has been teaching us to make these holes, connect the holes. You can see the cortex, the bony cortex here is untouched and the implants have been boom here inside. <clears throat> also, it's very useful this technique for the immediately posture strike. Because if you have a situation like this, for example, if you use the screws, you stop here normally. So you remove this tooth, you perform a vertical groove slot. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm with the laser. You can use also the pies in these cases. There are tips that make like this, that go inside. And then this is the project. And this is the implant. The implant is here. We are not been working on ill tissues, but on tissues who are healed. And this is after eight years of a structure which had been immediately loaded. And you can see the patient came to have the antagonist, which is a good indicator of success. Article you can find on the permanent line if you want to take a picture. Industrial distal extension technique. This Ramos place we can use also reverse mode, for example, in the superior area. And they work very good. There's a little kids, some is with the hammer. And these are the two implants at the end. It's not so easy to understand which one is the screw and which one is the blade. These two talk about the submerged implants. We've been saying the submerged implants, hmm, one piece implants better, but the submerged implants are useful. Yes, they are useful. Maybe for a goal that the inventors of the submerged implants, they have never thought to protect the implant from the action of the tongue immediately after intervention, in the period after intervention. Because during swallowing, the tongue pushes on the implants about it. So, my suggestion is that when you see a patient, you have to deal for a sector, for example. First thing to do, is to take a picture of the tongue and how it works. And for example, in this case, the bone in the inferior was wide, so you can insert as much as the There are no bone peaks to protect, there is a problem of the tongue, a lot of information that you combine to have the right selection. In the superior, the bone was thin, and so the choice is one piece implants welded well, together. We have different arrows, many arrows in our arch. Another thing to do, if it's possible, is to apply immediate load. For example, in this case, immediate reloaded because the force of the antagonist overcomes the pressure of the tongue, but you must rule perfectly the occlusion. Thus, it must be perfectly balanced. And also the timeline of occlusion. This is the article being published in 2003 about this topic, as you can see. But the first who thought about this situation has been Ugo Pasqualini, Marco Anto who has been taking these pictures to let the colleague understand the importance of this. Let's think if we have been inserting a couple of implants in this ridge, and then after intervention, the patient comes over home and swallows. We find the screws in the fish. So, Hugo Pasqualini, this one that we see the right, <coughs> invented a blade implant provided by a short abutment to have a delayed load. 
or the integration of the Christian state. 1972. These are other articles about the tongue. If you are interested about this topic, you can uh, download the effect of tongue trust on implant integration in this recent article we have been writing together with uh, Marco, my son, Moldovani, Shurman. <clears throat> so at the end, we can begin to form in our minds an operating scale. Scheme, scheme, scheme. <clears throat> so Marcus Cruz for also integration and efficient state in posterior sectors due to tongue pressure in the late lower prop, which are men and the rat. One piece cruise to preserve the visual bone in the aesthetic zone, as we saw before. We have the first choice of the second choice. Management and well, this is the prosthetic situation. <clears throat> they induce the mandibular fracture and they are bendable in mouth after implant insertion. The plates deal with narrow ridges. They preserve the residual bone when they are one piece. They are bendable before, uh, before, before insertion. In the sense that we try the blade, we remove the blade, we bend the abutment, we insert the blade. And also the choice comes from thinking, if we are born in the apical part, it's better to use an implant like this. And if we are born for walls, like in this case, and this surface, we can use this type of screw. There are different situations of face, but I show you now. <clears throat> and it's, of course, when we bend, the first thing to do is to, to reach the deep cortical, then we bend. Deep cortical is mandatory in all these institutions, except prayer exceptions. <clears throat> this is a case of my 1998. You can see this screw inserted in the fourth zone, bending of four, more than 25 degrees. This is the implant, another implant posteriorly. So I have to hold the balance and build a bridge like this. And this is after 17 years. You can see the bone has been including the bended part, which is very important because many times you see the finite elements, studies, computerized. They say they break because there is an angle. There's no angle. There is a curve because we are being inserted normally in implants immediately post-extractive, which is included by the bone. There are many also experience of us. We are we have no fractures, but that's rare, it's rare. And the industry status to bend the, the titanium drugs, the are there. So you can see the inclusion of them. Please, you first bend the blade and then insert in the bone. You can see such a reach, you can deal with it also with a single and single curve. This is a plate of mine being served in 1993 in a patient of Mestre in the of Venice, which has been harvested by the Food and Drugs Administration of the United States from this publication that we had by Carlo Pasquali, other colleagues, Leonard Linker, the inventor of the blades, to reclassify the blades at the same level of the screws. And this has been done. This was the panel in which this X-ray from mine has been inserted after 11 years. But what is beautiful, you can see how the blade has been modeled to be bicortical on the cortex of the nose, and which is the response of the bone around the neck. Somebody said these implants are not as integrated. Maybe he didn't know what he was talking about. <coughs> and this is the inverter. This is like the other guys they are talking about. Deserves an applause because he has been the passion of these people. 
that I see here. I'm very glad to be here with the colleagues that we see passion and enthusiasm. This is important in our profession. profession. Mm -hmm. You can see <coughs> histologic study. After 20 years from immediate loading, this is Lamella Bond, published in this book in 1997. Last minute of my lecture to talk about a protocol that I love very much. I have 20 years of experience in the full arts and 25 in the center. This is the Origa protocol from the upper jaw that you can find in this India publication <coughs> written at the this, this next. When you have a situation of High hypotrophy, I say hypotrophy because atrophy is there when there is no bone, and so we are talking about eustaosius or zygomatic nucleus. But talking about severe hypotrophy, in which there is just few bone in the premaxilla and in the tuber pterygoid area. For example, a patient with an intuition like this, in which he carries a fixed bridge which is failing and he comes to our office and if we remove the bridge and the teeth the patient goes to reabsorption and easily goes to mobile prosthesis and it's very difficult to get back. So the suggestion of this protocol is instead instead to going directly to the anterior is to look at the posterior inserting a couple of implants in the tuber pterygoid processes waiting for four to six months maintaining the superior bridge in that period or the teeth if there are just teeth and after six months in one single section you apply the abutments to the posterior implants, you remove all the teeth, you insert immediately post extracted in the premaxilla, you connect the anterior implants to the posterior ones, yet also integrated, that make like the aurea of that bridge. I saw somebody spoke about Aristotle. And you apply immediate load. Then the how hard you wait a bit and you go with the definitive one and you can also add implants if you want it. Oh, there is a problem one that you remove. <clears throat> Example, patient who comes to my office with bridge in her hand, instead of removing the teeth, I cement again the bridge and I plan the origa problem. First, two implants to bacterioid area. And then, six months wait, maintaining the other bridge. Maintaining also performing this inferior bridge to get the balance, because she has also that problem. So, after six months, I go and apply the abutments to the posterior implants. I remove all the anterior teeth, and insert new implants. And these implants, of course, are like this. So I go and bend these implants. This simplifies a lot. Bending these implants, connecting the anterior implant to the yet also integrated ones, and passing from these three prosthesis to a new one, provisional, of course, in one single section. The patient doesn't pass through mobile prosthesis. It's very important to tie the anterior implants to the posterior ones, because in the anterior they are inclined like this, and the crown root ratio is very bad. <coughs> this is the final work, before and after. We've been providing a solution capable to restore functions correctly. Articles. You can see 
done after 12 years. And sometimes the teeth were extracted, so premaxilla could be very thin like this. And so in this case, <coughs> what we do, we insert the posterior implants. We wait a bit. We insert then the anterior implants. We tighten the posterior and we go with definitive prosthesis. Case like this, you can see the ridge, very thin. So, posterior implants and anterior plates. Posterior screws and anterior plates. You can see there the plate inside, the abutment of the blade must reach the slope. That's very important to have a good quality work. So these implants are very use, use. No, no. There is a long distance and use a very strong flat bar. And she came to me because she had the inferior superstrength. And this is after four years. And we will provide a single stroke composed by implants and bar. Many cases performed, many publications. And last, the 2019 upgrade, the case of a woman who has been carrying for more than 30, 30 years a uh, mobile prosthesis. And this upgrade is the retrievable prosthesis so of the part. This is what happens. You can see the CT, CDCT, the bone is really scarce on one side and on the other side. So the plan is posterior implants, last minute? Okay. Posterior implants, and these are the implants that I'm planning to insert, and bar with attachments. <coughs> Screwing the prosthesis inside. So, I prefer to open, also to save the keratinized gingiva, but also to see exactly where the tuberosity finishes, Inserting drills which are smooth and displace the bone, they don't remove bone in these areas. If there is a correction to perform, we use scalpel, chisel, chisel, okay? And like this, and then one side, one screw like this. On the other side, same thing, same process and we have this 82,000 years old. Can you finish this case, that's this case? Okay. Removing uh, the posterior part of the mobile prosthesis and situation is like this. After four months, applying the abutments on the posterior implants, the drilling with a detector, and then comes the moment of the second session, the intervention, in which opening the premaxilla, inserting by means of using drills like this, that very nicely desired, and then correct for reach, and so I can insert one thin cylinder and three blades in the end. Then, instead of going and welding, I asked, I first welded the connectors on the bar, and then I go and weld this bar to the six implants. So you will have, these are the implants, and these are the connectors. And what you see upper right is the uh, temporary prestige. Temporary screw the prestige that you can see. Let me show you this case from years ago again, but I wanted to show you the end of the case. <coughs> this is the final prosthesis, screwed inside. With the advantages are you can use any, any titanium implant, it is re easily removable. Implants are always connected by the bar and compliance is very good. 2019, checking for a long period of time the restoring of the muscular tones, which is never balanced for a long time. You must follow the patient. This is after four years. So I'm 
basically one millisecond. I have this deep three. You can find on the joy it is on the PubMed, this clinical case, because these are articles. So we can uh, have this combined two protocols I've been talking about. We have a master in Rome. I, I, we show that the teachers here are very, very good. Maybe you don't need, if somebody wants to have a one week next year in Italy, in Rome, in a fantastic place, we will organize a week for foreign. If you are interested, you tell to me and Marco Pasquale. To end, I tell you that on the public passes of uh, Bangalore, I saw that it is written Tata Marco Polo. Marco Polo was a, a guy from Venice who came passing through India 700 years ago. And he wrote a referral book about Orient. I mean, Venice is here in Italy, and he had all this tour in China for commerce. He wrote a book when he got back, it became the referral book of Orient for all Occident for centuries. Marco Polo, and he knows public passes. Another thing to end is that there was a town called Pompeii in the Roman Empire, who was uh, submerged by lava eruption in 79 after Christ, after Christ. And there are the excavations. In one of the houses that they have been uncovered during the excavation, what did they find? They found a statue of Lakshmi, which is dated 62, before 62 after death. So we can say that our culture are connected since 2000 years. Thank you very much.